On our family, you're tuned in to Real Ass Real Radio 104.1, your night cap of comedy. It is Monday night, and we appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope you had a great weekend, um, a great Cinco de Mayo weekend out there celebrating this Mexican holiday that I don't think is really a Mexican holiday. But I I'll hope you guys you. had a good time celebrating. I'm Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Join the virtual studio with Miguel Colon Jr. Miguel, what's going on, my friend? Nothing, man. I'm interested in Patricio's educating us on Cinco de Mayo because I... I've always been under the belief that Cinco de Mayo was like a, a holiday made up by a beer company or something in the United States. Like, I don't really know what Cinco de Mayo is in Mexico. So I'm interested. Patricio, enlighten us. You want to know what Cinco, oh, uh, you want to know what Cinco de Mayo is in Mexico? Yeah. A Tuesday. Always? <laughs> That's odd. No. So <laughs> the, the one mis misconception that everyone has about Cinco de Mayo is that everyone thinks today is Mexican Independence Day, you know, when, when Mexico yeah. got its independence from, from Spain. However, today commemorates uh, the 19, the 1862 Battle of Puebla between the, the Mexican armies and the French armies that were led by uh, Napoleon. And it was like, I think, 5,000 Mexican troops taking on 20 or 25,000 French soldiers and like we we kicked their ass. We could we we sent them baguettes all the way back to France. You know how it was done so easily cuz the Mexican troops were like we're going to need to build a fort. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> By the time Napoleon's crew came up the fort had like a nice little pond in front of it, pink flamingos and stuff and they were like you ready to do this battle? They're like no no no, we're doing the tile right now. Uh, <laughs> But you say, you do you get upset that Americans celebrate Cinco de Mayo? Because I, I I feel like it's it's not a big it didn't I feel like everything now was a big deal. I don't think ten years ago this was a big deal, but now with social media and everybody having something to say, like somebody posted like, oh, "Don't be mad on Juneteenth if a Mexican person says their name is Lakeisha." You know what yeah, I mean? like because you know, like on Cinco de Mayo, black people, like, I'm Maria tonight, I'm Juan tonight. <laughs> like, do you get a, does it upset you or do you not? You don't care. So, it, it's more of a fact that you know, we're here to educate, we're gonna get, get everyone on the right track. It doesn't offend me if you want to be Maria, if you want to be Juan for tonight. Hey, you're embracing my culture, you're embracing my background and my heritage, and you're gonna have fun in it now. Today, everyone, like I said, thinks it's uh, Mexican Independence Day, which it's not. But at the same time, you know, everybody wants to go out, you know, support uh, cor uh, Corona beer, Presidente. They're drinking tequila. They're, they're putting money back into our uh, into the Mexican culture, Mexican country, but just celebrating, you know, a day to drink even more. I used to have this joke, uh, which, you know, this this might be the show, but I used to have this joke. <laughs> I used to have this joke. Uh, I said on, uh, on Cinco de Mayo. I said, I like to celebrate my holidays like I'm one of the people. On Cinco de Mayo, I drink tequila like my Mexican brothers. On St. Patrick's Day, I drink whiskey like my Irish brothers. And on Martin Luther King Day, I don't go to work like the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but if we laughed, <laughs> no, I so I actually, I'm not gonna do like you know, people like I'm 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 embracing the Mexican culture, I ain't doing all that because you ain't about to see me on no roof, you ain't about to see me <laughs> picking no fruit, you ain't about to see me putting no cement down. I ain't doing that. First of all, Patricia, Patricia, if y'all don't know, Patricia is like a half Mexican, half white. Um, a quarter Bigfoot, like I don't know, he's got a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff in him. 68% Sasquatch, 68% Sasquatch. But, dude, how do your people learn how to do all this stuff? They don't we go did. to those, they don't go to school for it. They don't, they just out, they be laying, they be laying some concrete. Like, did they go to concrete school? We, ju we just do it. Uh, Everyone always says that the uh, the pyramids in uh, in uh, Egypt was built by aliens or a different culture. You know, they don't take credit for you know Egyptians building the pyramids. We got pyramids in Mexico, and nobody questioned how those got built because we yeah. just built it. I learned how to lay tile down when I was eight years old. I changed brake pads when I was seven with my grandpa, and it's just been you know teaching the younger generation as early as possible because. Hey, Poppy, we gotta we gotta cut this grass. We gotta go now. We got seventeen houses on today. We gotta go. I think That's it's I think, yo. I, I think one of the worst. Like, uh, I'm, man, this is gonna be the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard like like when people used to make racially disparaging remarks towards like 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 Mexican culture. There's a group of people 
that used to, there used to be like the stereotype that I could never understand that people would call like lazy Mexicans. You, you, and it's like, where have I ever seen Bruh. Mexican people not taking, I've never seen a Mexican family on a weekend, not doing chores. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like I have Mexican homeboys that I knew not to go over their house until like two o'clock on Saturday. Cause yeah, the dude. first few hours of Saturday, if you showed, and y'all remember that too. If you happen to show up at your homeboy's house and they were doing chores, his mama was like, pick up a broom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? house, house smelling like Fabuloso up in there, bro. <laughs> well, no, the origin of, uh, uh, of the lazy Mexican, I think, kind of comes from uh, how Looney Tunes perpetuated a uh, uh, with Speed. the slowpoke slow slow Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Slow Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. Rodriguez. And I think that's kind of like why us Mexicans, like, we go at it hard because, like, no, we're not lazy. Isn't and it ridiculous? The show was about Speedy Gonzalez, but Slowpoke Rodriguez, like, see, look, they slow. What about the fast? No, 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 and they even gave y'all the slow voices. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey amigo. Que tal? Uh, <laughs> you know? It's me, Lopo <laughs> Rodriguez. Yeah, you see, the, the slow. <laughs> the, the slow speech. The slow speech because it comes from when we're drunk. When you talk to a sober Mexican, oye, mira, que, que, que lo que pasa. Like, it's just, it's fast talking. And sometimes a little curse word here or there just to keep the conversation going. But it, I don't get offended by any of that stuff because, like, when they tried to cancel out Speedy Gonzalez for the uh, Space, Jam, Space Jam movie, it was just, like, white culture and cancel culture trying to feel offended for us when, like, yo, that, that's my home right there. Love Speedy. Love Slowpoke. Yeah, I've never, I've never met another Latino that ever got offended unless they were, like, and I may hate to say this, but unless they were, like, like, like just super, super woke, gentrified. But anytime I see anything that's Latino, and it's as long as it's not just like, hey, these are the mud people over here, you know. Like, <laughs> but as long as it's that, I've always been into it, man. And then I think, I think also something that we do as Latinos is, I, I do this personally. Like, and this, this is, this is hilarious. If I find out somebody is Latino, I start liking them more. Like if I'm like, yeah, yeah, this dude's all right. They're like, you know, you know, yeah, you know, you know, you know, he's from from Guatemala. I'm like, where? Yeah, all right. He all right. Yeah, I'm it's the like same the same way, bro. If yeah. I meet a brother, if he like light skin, and he like, yeah, man, what you mean? I'm mixed, man. You know, I'm African and I'm this, but my my family originally from North Carolina. Like, oh, you from the South? Yeah. Hey, what's up, boy? What you drinking? Put that plate down. Let me get you the real plate. Hey, yeah. get him the real plate. I didn't know. I didn't know, man. We we ain't out here eating grilled cheese. Come here. It, it's that scene. <laughs> it's that scene from uh, from Key and Peele where Obama's, you know, saying, you know, hello there, how are you, hello, and he sees his black brother. He's like, hey, come here, man, hit, hit it up, hit it up. Yeah. When a Spanish person meets another Spanish person, yeah, we kind of like test the waters. Like, where are you from? Okay, you from there? And then, like, once we've established that, like, we're from like our certain areas. Boom! It's like we click the Spanish because like we don't want to be over here. We want to we want to talk with our compadres. I found out Freddie Prince Jr. was Puerto Rican when I was like in my twenties, and I was like, I don't know about Freddie Prince Jr. And they were like, Yo, that's Freddie Prince's son. And I was like, He Puerto Rican? And they were like, Yeah. I was like, My dude can't miss, yo. Sour Michelle <laughs> Gellar, come on, dog. <laughs> but no, like to go back with grilled the whole... cheese, Freddie, come here. <laughs> To go back on the, you the station. Yeah. <laughs> to go back on the on the offensive thing real quick. I remember a few years ago someone had asked me, like, do you feel offended when white people wear ponchos and sombreros? And then they they added to it, like, is that the Mexican version of blackface? I'm like, that is no way in hell. Yeah, because it's closed. You're not mocking for, like, hey, dude, Cinco de Mayo, I used to go out with a poncho, a sombrero, and I had this <laughs> this piñata that was a burro. It was a donkey piñata, and I stuffed a bottle of liquor in it, and I was running around pouring shots to people. And I look at that picture now, and I'm like, yeah, I could come back. Yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> The only th the only time like you're going to offend a, a Spanish person, I say this in general, because if you if you talk smack about three people, Number one, Mark Anthony. Don't you dare watch talk your mouth. Shame. Watch your mouth on Mark Anthony. Number two, do not talk crap about Selena. You know, she died Selena. for her sins. Amen. And then the third one that this this falls on every culture in the Spanish community. Walter Walter Mercado. Mercado. Hey, bro, Walter Mercado. Like like I literally said. If if there was a Hogwarts in America for Latin <laughs> it would be the Walter Mercado Institute of Magic. Who that? You know? who, that? who that? So mucho, Mercado, mucho yeah. amor. Junio. You know, well, what every time he's doing the months, Walter <laughs> Mercado was a psychic from Univision, uh, and he was he's from Puerto Rico, 
and he's real effeminate. Uh, I, I think he was gay. Yeah, I think he was gay. He's real effeminate and stuff. Uh, but he used to kill it, bro. Like, like what if they what? And he would do these close ups. Like he'd just be talking to this camera, and then all of a sudden, poof, this next one. And what if they would call your your abuela? Would like if you were choking and what they was on giving the future, you just you'd have to hold on. Yeah, you know, you'd be like, hold on, baby, he's gonna let me know if you live or not. You're like blue, like. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm gonna show Ken a picture of what the mercado, and I want. So he I was want like a Miss Cleo. Yeah, but Miss Cleo was whack. Like what they had, bro. Nah, that's what nah, the mercado. Look at that beautiful mercado. picture. And he, uh, the thing about what the mercado is, is like he. Also, if you watch that, he's got Ken. He's got. I think it's on Netflix or, or Hulu. They it's made the story of the, the, Net, the Netflix documentary. Oh my god, it's so good! Like, like you find out this dude was a boss too. Like he made moves in the entertainment industry that really changed so much. He passed away maybe two years ago. He's just on a new spiritual plane. That's all, though. But yeah, yeah. Hey, McCall, look, and, he like if 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 Miss Cleo was real, you know, <laughs> hey, Miss Cleo was real, bro. I, yeah, I, I, I know. everything she said came true in the in the black hood. I know y'all y'all think so, and because like, y'all y'all have to call her now for your free reading, and then like thirty seconds later, it's two ninety nine per second. Hey, man, yeah, one thing was free. Hey, he was just on the play, street, baby. <laughs> just on the streets letting you know. And me and Ken were just talking to a comic. We were talking to Dwayne Williams about Miss Cleo and the Miss Cleo movie. And and Dwayne Williams thought we were talking about Cleo from Set It Off. Man. And thought she had her own movie. And he was so perplexed. We laughed so hard, bro. Because he said, yo, ain't she, is she dead? She said a bank something? robbery. Did she die? Yeah, something about banks? dying or something. We was like, what are you talking about? He's like, Cleo from Set It Off. We said, bro, we talking about Miss Cleo, bro. <laughs> He's like, I know. I know. Because uh, they got a movie of her coming up, and uh, shout out to our friend Adam Murray. He's in the movie, and the rapper Lady of Rage is playing Miss Cleo. That's crazy to think Lady and of Rage. he didn't know. He didn't know who she was. He was like, but you know, it's funny, man. He, he'll he text me and be like, hey, have you ever heard of this rapper named the Lady of Rage? I'm like, yeah, have you ever heard of Water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know Lady of Rage, bro. Bro, she's about. I'm about to be in a movie with. Her. I didn't even know it was her. I said, "Good for you, man. That's so cool." But don't ever hit me up and ask me if I know about somebody in hip hop in the '80s or '90s, bro. Come on. Yeah, I'm working with this independent artist. His name's Rock Kim. Uh, <laughs> small guy. I think he's gonna make it. I think he's gonna make it. Yeah. He's got some talent. I was on the plane and um, I was in first class with this guy, um, Timberland. <laughs> like the yeah. shoes, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yo, dude, I, like he he worked with like some girl named Aaliyah. I, have you heard of any of those people? Yeah, yeah, dude, I have, I really have. Adam I was laughing when you said Mark Anthony because only Mark Anthony I mess with is the wrestler. <laughs> 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 I had to Google like what Miss Mark Anthony he talking about, bro? No, that uh, the name itself just has so much power and so much respect behind it. I remember you could use it to I, cast out demons, Mark Anthony. <laughs> Ah, they invoke the name of our patron saint. Now, what the Mercado? He comes out like the Ghostbuster trap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember I had this client, and I'm not going to say the last name, but it, this was years Macate. ago. Macate. <laughs> but it was, the, the first name was Marx, middle name was Anthony, and then the third name was, you know, insert Spanish name here. Yeah. And every time, like, the mother would call to find out about her son's case, like, hi, this is Mark Anthony's mother. I want to talk about Mark Anthony's case. I'm like, you mean, you know, Spanish name here? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mark that, Anthony that... Rodriguez? Don't just drop the Mark <laughs> Anthony. The cross would... is shook when you said it. <laughs> Mark Anthony! <laughs> <laughs> come down, gonna... come down, come down. Have a, have a I... piece. Like we're gonna leave him in there a few more days in jail just so just because of the way you're using his freaking name That's right now. Funny man, well, we gotta take a commercial break, man. Uh, by the way, I meant the wrestler name is Mark Henry, not Mark Anthony. You know, on this show, we will mess up some stuff, yo. Like Clint Eastwood being assaulted last week. Yeah, <laughs> James was so. I love, I love that. We'll get back. I love whenever James that. realizes he messed up. You see him looking at the computer like, I don't know. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm wrong. Here. Right, yeah. We gotta take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Real Labs, Real Radio, one hundred four point one. Here last, we're ready at 104.1, your nightcap of comedy. My name is Ken Miller. I'm in the big chair tonight. Join the virtual studio with Patricio Rocky and Miguel Colon Jr. Um, James is off right now because it is James' birthday. So James is out celebrating his birthday. His birthday was May 5th, Cinco, actually. And as you guys know, we pre-record these shows. So and his son graduated. Uh, his son Devin graduated. Son Devin from graduated from college, bro. Out with here. an engineering degree, and he's he's moving to Baltimore 
to slang dope on Avon Barksdale's corners. Yeah, because you know? <laughs> <laughs> and James actually thinks his son is going up there to do good things. But now, if you move into Baltimore, you're probably going to sell dope. Yeah, ain't nobody ever going to Baltimore. They're like J- James is all excited. He's like he's he's working for this really cool shipping organization. It's just naked girls with masks on, making up <laughs> heroin. And James is like, their their culture is interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. But- and then you know James actually knows because Michelle's like, what do you think is going on? He's like, no, 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 no. It's a good job. He's leaving. He's yeah, effing he's leaving. Let, let him, go. him go. Let him go, man. And if you never hung out, man, I got to hang out with James and Michelle tonight. One of the funnest couples on the planet to hang out with. Yeah. They they are the epitome of what marriage is. Yeah, yeah. Like, They've you, got a you great... See James ago, they have a great marriage, great kids. They laugh together. They drink together. They always having sex, according to James. So that's that's the marriage you want. They cook, they cook for each other clean. They they that's the epitome. The that's only right downside right. James has is he cannot interact with a woman oh, nah. for anything at all. At for all. anything. Like I remember nah. years ago we were talking about it on Real Last when he was like talking about uh, somebody came on his show back when he back when he was doing the, the show at Afro in the old studio and he was like uh I was like, did y'all go to y'all go to breakfast? Because James always took his guests out to breakfast after the show, and he was like, no, I couldn't. It was just me and her. And I was like, yeah, nah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, James yeah. Real like, oh, quick, no. man, we got to give a shout out to our new sponsors. First of all, we got to give a shout out to Ty Bogue. Um, ooh, dang, that was gross. Excuse me. The ridiculous <laughs> comedy. I don't burnt raw into my. <laughs> <laughs> the ridiculous comedy of magic show every Thursday night in Daytona at the Shores Resort and Spa, 7 p.m. and it's only fifteen dollars. Hosted by um 2018 Florida Magician of the Year Todd Bogue. For more information, visit toddbogjokes.com. That is the ridiculous comedy and magic show every Thursday night in Daytona at the Shores Resort and Spa, 7 p.m. Our other sponsor, we want to give a shout out to our brother Miracle at Miracle's Kitchen, located in the Ovidos Farmer's Market every first and third Saturday. They're open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also at the Maitland's Farmer's Market every Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Physical location in Castleberry coming soon. For your catering needs, contact us at miraclescitchen.com. Southern home style cooking at its best. So shout out to Tybo's and Miracle, man, for being sponsors here on Real Lab. So it was something else I want to talk to you guys about. We were talking about Cinco de Mayo. If you listen, you guys know. I'm like, wait a minute, this show? Oh, no, this is a new show. Uh, <laughs> we pre-record these shows, man. So we haven't had a chance to speak about our weekends. But um, we were talking about Cinco. My other one is um, the the May 4th, the May the 4th be with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a, a roast of Darth Vader, and I played Mace Windu, which I, I take Mace Windu and then I take the brother from Pulp Fiction and I put the two characters together. <laughs> so it's just a Jedi cussing people out. You know what I mean? But, but, but yeah, this is my thing about it. I don't know nothing about Star Wars. Yeah, I've noticed it. Like, I remember you told that to me before. Like, you bro, don't even I, know anything, anything about Mace Windu. Not a thing, bro. The only Mace I know is Mace and Betha. Mace like, and Betha. And we're going to rise that's to it. the top. But I was, I, I was so in awe at the fact that these guys knew so much about Star Wars. Did you look at them? Obviously, bro, they knew a lot about Star bro. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'm talking about little nuances. Little, like, I ain't know Darth Vader killed a bunch of kids. Like, I ain't know that. Uh, like, uh, Darth Vader. Vader. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was coming with some facts. Well, the thing the it thing was is, actually Anakin. He wasn't Darth Vader yet. It was uh, <laughs> Anakin killed a bunch of the. Ki- yeah, yeah, I'm gonna let me get my PowerPoint. Well, no, 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 no. It, it, so the, the the way it happens, it was Anakin. It was Darth Vader, but like in the in the human form, not in the full body uh, full body suit that you see Darth Vader as all the time. He got the title of Darth Vader the moment he gave himself to the Emperor, and the Emperor bestowed him that name. So yeah, Anakin. Bro, the Emperor Darth was Vader. like the Emperor was like he was like, how do I give myself to you? He's like, just come here. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll kill hey. a bunch of kids, and then you you're gonna you're gonna do something first. <laughs> yeah, hey. hey, bro, I was clowning because since I probably was, well, I, I thought it was Dark Vader this whole time. Oh bro, my god, it was dark. He's like <laughs> dark, dark Vader. I was to do Dark Vader, yo. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Dark Vader. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but but dude, I, it was I was I was kind of impressed because. I can't think of one thing in my life that I just know crazy facts about. 
Like I know stuff. Like I know pro basketball. Yeah. But you, I couldn't tell you what Jerry West averaged in 1971. Yeah. I love pro wrestling, but I can't tell you how many times Ric Flair was the champion. I love hip hop, but I can't tell you what sampled on what. I just know stuff. These yeah. dudes know, knew like the ins and out yeah. of Star Wars. Yeah. Tell them to draw a boob. <laughs> hey, look, okay, okay, Ameri okay. Eric can probably do that. Yeah. The boob looks like the Death Star. Yeah, it's like honk, honk, so. Honk, so honk, I'm honk. just curious. Like, is it anything you guys know? I'm talking about like the ins and outs of something that that most people don't really know like that. Man, to be real, man, I know I, I could go I could go toe to toe with these kids on Star Wars because when I was a kid, Same. here's the thing. So let me tell you something, Ken. I pretended not to be a nerd, but I loved nerd stuff when I was a kid. But I would that wasn't gonna fly in the neighborhood. That wasn't gonna fly at all in the neighborhood. So yeah. I actually read Star Wars books from the library. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you you're expanding universe. Yeah, bro. But but shut up. Don't make it sound weird. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty. So cool. I literally I literally would read like the books and stuff, and because I was also always on punishment. So like I made sure I had stuff because you know I just couldn't shut up, man. You know, like I I I I I would push things and my mom would be like, "That's it, you're not going out." So I'm like, "That's fine. I got a collection of books in here." <laughs> like, uh, but you know, I nerded out with a lot of stuff. I actually, I nerd hard. Like I always think I'm like I think I got a tablespoon of autism in me because if I like something, that's it, man. <laughs> that's it. Like I'll I'll be sitting here right now, just be like chill out but try to figure out a way to bring this up in the real last conversation and then we'll bring it up be like yeah yeah i saw yeah, yeah. I, the, the cartoon avatar the last bender was great i love this about it and then you guys will be like cool and you'll brush past it i'll be like no that wasn't the plan the plan was to talk more about it <laughs> like <laughs> bring it up again later miguel bring it up again later so i did man i got into lots of stuff like that and hip-hop was one of them that i nerded out into hip-hop and there was no like material other than the source and and reading Double liner SL. notes and i would read liner notes and all the time I would be like, oh man, they're they're they're, they're thanking the same A uh, and R guy, so they're obviously with. Them. And I would, you know, I would read the back liner notes, the albums, and I'd be like, oh, this is crazy. So and so worked on this with each other. So I've nerded out into a lot of things like that. Um, a lot of a lot of different history. I hate when people say like, oh, I know history. Like, yeah, you don't you don't know it all. But uh, a lot of like a lot of like uh, especially history of like the first two major world wars, Korea, Vietnam. That's, a, that's the one. That's what I would say for you. you yeah, know a lot about military stuff. You know, wars and stuff. Yeah, like that. I would. Fig I figured that was gonna be your first answer. Yeah, that is that is one with me. I just I had to I had a chance to secretly let y'all know I read Star Wars books when I was a kid. I need to get that out there. <laughs> like a serial killer needs you to know he killed the girl. I need you guys to know. That I read Star. I am so glad I never played Dungeons and Dragons because my mom, when I was a kid, told me Dungeons and Dragons was like for the devil. It so is. I never played it. <laughs> yeah, you know Latin families. It was for the devil it's because I know for a fact I would have really got into it. And I'm oh. sitting here right now with some weird hat at Patricio's hat house, like <laughs> you rolled a double six three, Patricio. You didn't encant the spell of Jasmine. Am I the only one taking this serious? <laughs> Let's do a bump. Come on. Let's do a bump. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Patricio? Is oh, you're something that you got that that that's you, you're so into. You that you, you were in now. Like I'm I'm literally wearing a Star Wars t-shirt right now because today isn't uh Cinco de Mayo. It's uh Revenge of the Fifth. Oh. Yeah, it's it, today. Yeah, it's a continuation of May the Fourth, and no, I never. I I never that's the first time I ever heard that. And that's for like a little bit more like deeper hardcore fans of the Star Wars universe. But yeah, dude, I I, I watched it as a kid. I read the books. So I you went games. from so May Fourth is soft porn, and then then the fifth is the hardcore stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> May Fourth is on Showtime at eleven thirty, <laughs> and but May Fifth like... is scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> But no, if if I were to say like outside of the you know the Star Wars universe, I'm a really big into cartoons. So when it comes to South Park, uh, uh, Family Guy, The Simpsons, like I can tell you all the episodes, you know, from from beginning to end. And politics, I love 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 politics. So like being able to sit down with someone and not debate, but actually just converse about you know certain policies, things that are going on in the world right now. You could talk politics with someone and not be yelling at each other's face. 
And you like going on spiritual ayahuasca journeys and stuff. Yeah. Yes, I do. Where you're hanging out with Wiley e. Coyote in the sky, and he's like, "This is why you need to shoot up that shopping center." You're like, "I don't think this is." What <laughs> do it, Patricio. Hey, and then he wakes up and just falls to the ground. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> ting, yeah, man. That's, I, I envy that because I really, like I said, it's nothing that I can really like. I could talk sports. But if you start asking me, like, hey, well, well in, 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 in 2007, Brady's, put, I'm like, man, I don't know all that. Yeah. I can't, I can't go. But these dudes and, 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 um, and the one, and a couple girls that were on the uh, panel, they knew every, Samantha Ivy, when I tell you she murdered, she had her roast, um, memorized. Everybody else was up there with notes. She had her roast and then did a Darth Vader song because, you know, she does the guitar yeah. comedy stuff. But everybody up there just knew Star Wars. And I was sitting there like, yeah, so I actually started the roast off with, um, so I just want y'all to know, I don't know S about Star Wars. <laughs> I Google everything. And if it's wrong, I'm sorry. Like, so I didn't know that that these two were the parents of Kylo Ren. And I didn't know that this was so-and-so's granddad. And then that was his uncle. And I ain't know Buddy lost um, the Millennium Falcon in a spades game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Big Joker. Ah! Yeah, oh, hey. you son of a yeah, I thought I thought the Google dude, the little Google, I thought that was Yoda as a baby. He was gonna get older later. I didn't no, know he was Yoda's, Yoda's old, baby. old, old, and dead by the time yeah. that's up. He was nine hundred when he died. Yeah, yeah. so I ain't know. So you know he, you know Yoda had said some racist stuff. He was nine hundred. Oh yeah. He's like, <laughs> we have no problem with them having their own neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> They could have their own Jedi set. It's just mm. they cannot use their comb. Do not take it home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Master Yoda. That. What do you think I about Mace Windu? Lie, Good one. He is one of. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he could oh, pass. Yeah, 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 I learned a lot. I mean, I'm talking. About, I was googling, and I was like, "What? This person? Wait, huh?" How? Did, when? So you've when, never when? watched any of the Star Wars movies, or you just have in passing, and it's just I, you know. I have in passing. Like yeah. when when I six seven years ago, when I was asked to do the first roast, that's when I actually watched the movies. I had never uh. watched them in full length, and and I'm like this. It's a lot of movies I've never I've seen them, but I've never like full length. Like remember we used to do the movies Ken's never seen. Yeah, seven? yeah. And Star Wars was a, um, I just didn't watch it as a kid because honestly, as a kid, we ha we didn't. Just didn't we didn't watch movies like that? Yeah, we we were t we were a TV family, right? TV all, shows yeah. we watched TV shows like crazy. But my mama wasn't. We weren't at the opening night of a movie. You know what I mean? Like we just didn't do that. That's why I go to movies like crazy now. Cause you I love it now. I, yeah, I it's love movies. Experience. Now. I love movies now. But shout out to everybody that came through, man. Made a four feet with you. Um. Uh, roast of Darth Vader, man. We truly appreciated it. And uh, we about to take a commercial break. But also, shout out to these two nerds on the show. And now we secretly know Miguel um, bullies Patricio because he's a nerd as well. <laughs> <laughs> Patricio, I'm going to be talking all this crap about Patricio. Patricio's just going to hold up a mirror while I'm talking. I'm like, ah, I'm talking to me. <laughs> we'll be right back. Real loud, real radio, 104.1. Dad, Patricio called me a nerd. Got you. Come back real loud. We're ready at 104.1, your nightcap of comedy. It is Monday night. My name is Ken Miller in the big chair tonight. Guys, do us a favor. Go out to Instagram, follow us. Facebook, follow us. Um, Twitter, follow us. Go out to our YouTube page and subscribe and watch all of our shows. I've uploaded all of them. And if you want to if you want to see these beautiful faces, and if you miss any of these shows, you can check us out in podcast format. If you go to iHeart and search Real Labs, we appreciate that. One more time, giving a shout out to our sponsors. Our sponsor, Todd Bogue Jokes, the Ridiculous Comedy and Magic Show every Thursday night in Daytona at the Shores Resort and Spa, 7 p.m. Tickets are $15, hosted by 2018 Florida Magician of the Year Togbo. For more information, visit togbojokes.com and also our brother Miracle at Miracle's Kitchen located in Novito's Farmer Market every first and third Saturday. They're open from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also, Maitland's Farmer's Market every Sunday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Physical location coming soon to Castleberry. If you need some catering, miraclescitchen.com for your southern home style cooking so shout out to them cats right there join the virtual studio with patricio from with the side of chaos podcast miguel colon jr james is off because today is well excuse me 
when we taped this, it was James' birthday. So happy birthday to James. Happy and his birthday, son James. graduated from college with his master's degree. And now he's moving to Baltimore to push rhymes like weight. Imagine, imagine we had to like, like try to explain where we were somewhere, and the police are like talking to us, and it's like, and I'm like, no, 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 but but that Monday, yeah, I heard you guys were talking, yeah, but that Monday wasn't that Monday, that was Friday morning at 11 a.m. I'm like, I'm going down for this murder, aren't I? I know you gotta be confused, bro. They gotta be. They're like, wait a minute, why they talk about Cinco? It's Wednesday. Yeah, where were you at 11 a.m. on on Friday? Oh, I was recording uh, the Monday evening real laughs. Now what? Put him uh, in jail. When I, when, I, when I plug the show at uh, at trivia and at bingo, people come up to me. They're like, "Are you supposed to be at the radio station right now?" I'm like, "They're they're done. They're gonna be. Yeah. Pre- they're pre recorded and they'll be there." But like, I just heard you a few moments ago. Like you were on the radio. How'd you do that? So check it out. My mom's cousin. He passed away, but my mom's cousin loved our show, right? And he used to listen all the time and he would drink while he was listening and he would call up the station to try to call in to talk. And they would be somebody at the station at that time because they were doing another show, but it wasn't our show. And he would be like, I want to talk. I want to talk to my cousin, Miguel. Put him on real quick. And they're like, there's no Miguel. He's like, I'm listening to him. Like, (laughs) I want to chime in. He's like, I want to chime in. (laughs) That's funny, man. Because yeah. you had somebody hit you up the other day trying to chime in. Like, bro, we recorded. Yeah, this yeah. Recorded. yeah. I was like, we're done. I always tell them, like, cool, man. Just call, call the station line. No. Angel's probably there at night doing his show. Like, what is going on? Uh, dude, was well, it what janitor? It would be funny because I feel like we talk enough about stuff where I feel like people would call in to argue with us about what we're talking about. So the old shows, me, Devin, and James, we would always promote the texting service, even though we never checked it because it wasn't on or it wasn't there. And, uh, Jim sometimes, uh, uh, Jim Colbert would tell me, he'd be like, you want to see something? And I would come in to do like the monsters and he would show, he's like, what the hell are these people talking about? Because then you have the texting <laughs> line and he knew it was from our show that we had aired, but he's like, I don't know what any of these comments are. People would be like, yo, put that baby in the box. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have an omelet. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny, man. That's hilarious. So, man, I, it's, it's NBA playoffs. Um, My favorite time of the year, man. I am a huge NBA basketball fan. And uh, I am a Lakers fan. If anybody knows or follows Lakers. me, know I am a Lakers fan. They got beat by crazy points on Friday night, Thursday night after we left the improv, we went was to go smoke 25 a points or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was like 25, yeah. 30 points. It was a beat down. But this is my thing that upsets me about sports. And Patricia, you talked about this in one of the last segment about having a friendly debate with somebody when it comes to politics. Mm-hmm. I don't do friendly sports debates because what I can't stand is when somebody S's on my team when they <laughs> lose, but don't say nothing after we done beat somebody. Like, I, I don't know why that bothers me, whereas Facebook will be super quiet when the Lakers win. But as soon as they lose, I told you LeBron ain't the king, but he just won 17 games in a row. Like, what? <laughs> he had like, 20 yeah, points. He, and went, he, went, he went 18. Yeah. The, the, the big difference is, like, uh, all those players, all those athletes, they have, they're going to have haters. Politics, like it, you're just basically just discussing law and procedures. With these, you're just discussing, like, yo, I mean, hey, LeBron. Patricio, Prop 65 didn't pass. Loser, <laughs> <laughs> have fun, man. Your but, season's uh, over. <laughs> but, but that's the one thing about sports. I mean, there's always going to be a loser, no matter what. And you know, that's why sports is uh, ready for life. Us being old school, I mean, we're we're gonna rag on the loser. Hey, you know, hey, you you lost, you suck. But you, LeBron. but you, but you can't. But I, I get that. I totally understand that. But you can't be quiet for three months and then wait because you wait for them to fail. Oh, let me, yeah. let, let, let me, me let me help you guys with this one. I'm a Jets fan, and my whole life, my whole life, uh, I've, 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 I've had close moments where we were doing good, like the Mangini seasons. But mostly, it's an uphill battle. But I have listened to Jets fans rag for the past 15, 20 years, talk trash about Tom Brady like we wouldn't have taken Tom Brady at any moment to be our quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> like if Tom Brady was like, hey, I want to play for the Jets, we'd be like, come here, come here, baby, come here. But people are like, hey, he's overrated. I'm like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't, you know, like, and then the, the worse than the overrated. Overrated is like the beginning of, of, uh, of hater. But when they're like, he's trash. Tom Brady's trash. Like that's what LeBron's trash. Bro, Steph Curry's trash. I mean, Steph Curry I, is trash. I'm kidding. 
<laughs> bro, I've had this argument with people. I will if you make it to the NBA or the NFL and you play at least a season or two, that ain't trash to me. Yeah, I, I'm not just at saying. All. And the person who talked the most junk about them being trash is the same person that got their youth youth basketball trophies up over around oh, their house. Oh yeah, yeah, rec league. <laughs> you got their rec trophies around the house. LeBron James is a bum. Four time MVP. Yeah. Four time Finals MVP. A four time champion. That he a bum. Yeah. The you're bum, bum next to best. And you couldn't start on JV? Come on, yeah. bro. And then when uh, they start with the when they start with the he's overrated, I'm like, how? Like they're like, no, nah, you know, what's five time MVP? What's that mean? It means five <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> you were the most valuable the player in the entire <laughs> league. <laughs> I I would have loved, I would love to have been like older during the time of Jordan. And to hear all the hate. Oh, because you're a like, Chicago boy too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, all I heard was praise my yeah. entire life of you know Jordan being the best, Jordan you know being the goat. But like, I would have loved to have heard the outside of you know everyone looking in and like, oh yeah, Jordan's trash. Jordan's yeah. Just go, that. You, all you need to be was in New York at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because hey, he was I'm a Nick real. killing machine. Yeah. I'm gonna be real with you though, Miguel. New York wasn't as bad. Detroit. Oh yeah, yo, Detroit. I yeah. Thomas. Isaiah Thomas will talk about how much he respects Jordan, but at the same time, talk about how much he beat Jordan. Yeah. In, <laughs> in, 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 uh, uh, what was it? Um, Reggie Miller, um, the Pacers, man. They hated the Bulls, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the Chicago did a lot to knock, but to say any athlete is overrated, I'm with you on that. Because especially if you're a mere mortal. If yeah. you're a mere cat that just that yeah. you don't, you ain't you ain't athletic at all, yo yo the the thing you do the best is to open a beer and sit there and watch the game. But Can, somebody overrated? Come that's on, That's my bro. favorite. That's my favorite with women's sports when guys are like, "Yeah, she's trash," and I'm like, "She wax her. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but she's these women aren't good enough. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like. They're top tier athletes. There is some debate, and I'm one of the people who have it. There is some debate between what a top tier female athlete can do compared to a top tier male athlete in some things. There's some height differences and stuff, man. I know people hate doing it, but there is. But to but to think you're anywhere near a collegiate athlete when you're just some dude chilling around. I I, I mean, I know dudes talking trash about women's basketball, and not just that they don't enjoy it, because I don't watch women's basketball. I go, I go on record. I, it, it's not as fun. Same. For me. No Duncan. I, but, I do. I watch it. But when it comes to like talking trash about them as athletes, I'm like, come on, they're top tier, world class athletes. You know, like, like it's just that's my favorite, my favorite uh, sports misogyny moment when they're like, I could take her. Yeah. I do. Dude, dudes were saying that about Ronda Rousey. Everybody here knows a dude who would be like. I yo, I could take Ronda Rousey. I'm like, I could take her to dinner and then pay for everything <laughs> and then hope she had a lovely evening. Cause that's it. She's a top tier world class athlete. When you get to that level of top tier world class, you are like you said, you're not like a mortal. No, you know, you're a demigod. Yeah. 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 100 percent agree. 100 percent agree, bro. Except, I, except bowling. <laughs> Bowling's the only sport where it's like you could eat a chili dog and a beer and be like the MVP. But no, here, here's the what aspect that people forget, you know, when they say, oh, the ease over Raider or this or that. That individual went through God knows how many years, how many hours, blood, sweat, and tears of practice to perfect the game, to get under the radar of a scout, to get uh, uh, g given a scholarship, to kill it on that level, and then be under the microscope again to be drafted by, you know, with the NA NBA, the NFL, the NHL. Like these dudes do their effort and the grind to get up there. And I'm sorry, you know, Greg, that you know you were you were supposed to make state, but you threw to the left instead of the right. <laughs> yeah. Let go of that dream, bro. Yeah. All right, you put yeah. some respect on all the on all these athletes' names. Yeah, dang. So, so did somebody named Greg do you dirty, V? That's <laughs> <laughs> his dad's name. Yeah, that's all the Greg. <laughs> that's all the Greg. Greg's driving Greg. right now. Greg's driving right now. I still hate Brady. I'm yeah, <laughs> I could have thrown over those mountains. You know, <laughs> hey, hey, what's funny about that when you talk about the Jets? By the way, I know three Jets fans you, Dean Napolitano, and a friend of mine named Jeanette. I don't know any yeah. other Jets fans. So when you say you was a Jets fan, I was like, okay. But the thing you said about them taking Brady, cast it out, man, I can't stand LeBron. I said, well, I bet you LeBron went to your team. 
Yeah, I bet oh, you yeah. with your team and won your championship, bro. You'll be happy as hell. Don't you know don't the Pacers? Do you, you know the Pacers and the Pistons would have taken Jordan at any moment. Oh, any moment. Any bro. moment. The Knicks would have taken him at any moment. Any any moment, man. But yeah, so if you're out there watching the uh, playoffs, man, yo yo, show some love for my Lakers. Respect my team, um, or get slapped up. Because <laughs> because a lot of you guys out there are non-athletic, so you can't be out here telling people they unathletic and you ain't athletic at all. It's and like I said, it's always to do with the rec trophies in his house. Always, man. That guy, that guy who has his trophies from when he was nine to ten years old. And he's the up. worst father. The <laughs> the the less time wow. he got he is the less time he got to play sports. Like if he stopped playing sports by high school, if he got to college, he might be a little better. But if he stopped in high school, he's gonna be a very bad father when it comes to sports because he's always like, you know, your old man could have your old man could have gone to Boise State, but I had you. <laughs> you know, it's like I didn't ask for it. Yeah. I and, brought and, all and, this. Hey, and then he but he was born like 20 years after his high yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had me when you were 36. Yeah. <laughs> I could have been a walk-on. <laughs> Greg's really upset right now. Yeah. Oh, I could have yeah. been And Patricio's oh. law firm took my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my other favorite one is y'all could have went to the NFL, but man, I, I blew out my knee. Man, let me see this paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> you blew out your knee working at Publix. Man. Yeah. Uh, and, and he, yeah. The, yeah, I could have. I could have. That's you know what people do that with comedy all the time. Like I was gonna do stand-up comedy, but then you know, I wasn't funny. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now what happens is they see what it takes to be a comic and they're like nah yeah nah, nah. yeah they thinking they're gonna be famous like in two do weeks and they do you understand. guys do you guys ever meet people that are pursuing careers that you're like oh man like as a comic it was hard until i got to like the point where i was headlining and making money in comedy making this my career but it was hard to tell people like what do you do i'm, I'm a comic and then you know they're like, ah, you know, what bar are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing yeah, one across the yeah. street. But have you ever met somebody that's like 38 years old? You're like, what are you doing? Like, yo, man, I'm a rapper. Man, and you're like, like oh, <laughs> hey, hey, man, I this is a great topic, and we want to keep going, but we gotta go. Oh I, man, I just looked at the clock. I realized, man, we got like 30 seconds. Uh, uh, what you at this weekend, Patricio? Uh, sh shout out to Sebastian Hernandez, John Couch, Shaylo, Shaylo, and Daniel Martinez. Comics came out to a community junction, Thorn Park for a comedy every Thursday night, beginning at nine o'clock. Where you at this weekend, Miguel? I'm taking my mom out. It's Mother's Day this weekend. I'm taking my mom out on Sunday. Nice, nice. I have nothing going on this weekend, man. Comedy shows got canceled. Um, so I will be chilling this weekend. And I can't take my moms out because they dead. Anyway. My <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's Patricio, Miguel Colonji, James. Happy birthday, my brother. I'm Ken Miller. Patricio, you got the honors. Tell her what to do. Take your ass to bed. Good night, family.